to our service of morning prayer on this Friday the 9th of August. Today the church commemorates Mary Sumner, uh, founder of the Mother's Union. Mary Elizabeth Sumner, née Hollywood, was born in 1828 at Swinton. In 1848 she married a young curate, George Henry Sumner, nephew of Archbishop Sumner, who was himself to become Bishop of Guildford in 1888. A mother of three children, Mary called a meeting in 1876 at which the Mother's Union was founded, providing a forum in which to unite mothers of all classes in the aim of bringing up children in the Christian faith. Baptism and parental example were its two basic principles. At first a parochial organisation, it grew steadily into an international concern, encouraging the ideal of a Christian home. Mary died on this day in the year 1921. So let's just spend a moment in quiet as we come before God in prayer. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory for ever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will. That the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from 2 Samuel chapter 1. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from defeating the Amalekites, David remained two days in Ziklag. On the third day, a man came from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dirt on his head. When he came to David, he fell on the ground and did obedience. David said to him, where have you come from? He said to him, I have escaped from the camp of Israel. David said to him, how did things go? Tell me. He answered, the army fled from the battle, but also many of the army fell and died. And Saul and his son, Jonathan, also died. Then David asked the young man who was reporting to him, How do you know that Saul and his son Jonathan died? The young man reporting said to him, I happened to be on the Mount of Gilboa, and there was Saul leaning on his spear, while the chariots and the horsemen drew close to him. When he looked behind him, he saw me and called to me. I answered, Here, sir, and he said to me, Who are you? I answered him, I am an Amicalite. He said to me, Come, stand over me and kill me, for convulsions have seized me, and yet my life still lingers. So I stood over him and killed him, for I knew that he could not live after he had fallen. I took the crown that was on his head and the armlet that was on his arm, and have bought, and I have bought them here to my Lord. Then David took hold of his clothes and tore them, and all the men who were with him did the same. They mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Saul and his son Jonathan, and for the army of the Lord, and for the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. David said to the young man who had reported to him, Where do you come from? He answered, I am the son of a resident alien, an Amicalite. David said to him, Were you not afraid to lift your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? Then David called one of the young men and said, Come here and strike him down. So he struck him down and he died. David said to him, Your blood be on your head, for your own mouth has testified against you, saying, I have killed the Lord's anointed. David intoned his lamentation over Saul and his son Jonathan. He ordered that the song of the bow be taught to the people of Judah. It is written in the book of Jasher. He said, Your glory, O Israel, lies slain upon your places. How the mighty have fallen, tell it not in Gath, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, Or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice, the daughters of the uncircumcised will exult. You mountains of Jeboah, let them be no dew or rain upon you, nor bounteous fields. For there is the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul anointed with oil no more. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, nor the sword of Saul return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, 
In life and in death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you with crimson in luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of battle. Jonathan lies slain upon your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perish. A short reflection then on our reading from T. Samuel by Angela Tilby. Even in death, Saul is dishonoured, this time by an enemy soldier, hoping to save his own life by pretending to have escaped, responded to Saul's request to kill him. David's response is ruthless, a measure of his own still conflicted emotions about Saul. These are finally poured out in his lament for Saul and Jonathan. The lament combines an eloquent tribute to Saul and a passionate farewell to Jonathan, David's beloved, and the friend of his heart. The name Jonathan means given by God. His life has been a gift to David and David acknowledges that his heart is broken. Christian teaching has sometimes tended towards stoicism and even encouraged us to move on too quickly for our good when a loved one dies. But scripture does not suggest that we should try to rise above human emotion. Jesus wept for Lazarus. Allowing ourselves to lament is a way of integrating our deepest loves and greatest losses within the love of God. It is right to be grateful for those friends who know us deeply, those who love we, whose love we treasure and depend on, our true partners in life. Lamenting their loss is a way of honouring them in the presence of God and of bringing healing to our own hearts. Grief, as is so often said, is the price we pray for love. We say the Benedictus together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And so let us pray using some intercessions by a member of the Mother's Union. Be with us, Lord, in our working and our resting, in our laughing and our crying, in our eating and our fasting, in our travelling and our staying. Abide with us each day and each night. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your people all around the world, remembering the sorrow to which some are hurled. The people of Ukraine and Israel and Gaza, to name but a few. For all of the world, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray also for the Mother's Union, the projects that uh, they work on, for the diocese that are linked to the Mother's Union, for all of the work that Mary Sumner established, we thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for your blessings, Lord, on all who are ill in mind, body or spirit. Heal and reassure them for all who are suffering and those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all those who we who we see no longer, all who have passed along to be with you. May they rest in peace 
and may their memory be a blessing and a comfort to those who remember. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, Lord, to be as you would want us to be, kind and caring for all those that we see. Bless us, Lord, in all that it is that we do. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And the collect for today. Faithful and loving God, who called Mary Sumner to strive for the renewal of family life, give us the gift of your Holy Spirit, that through word, prayer and deed, your family may be strengthened and your people served. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it's been a joy to pray with you as ever. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you again soon. God bless. <laughs>